people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. Welcome to the mother relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. Another look at what is to be Chantel Kimran's Queensbury Promotions debut set to go down late next month on the 20th on the undercard of Nathan Heaney versus Brad Pauls. She's fighting El Hamme Khaled. It's a respectable opponent for a rebound fight, a solid opponent who's been there and done that with some really good fighters over the years, won some fights, lost some fights. Although she is a naturally smaller woman than Chantel Cameron, where Chantel has been campaigning at 140 for several years now, Elham has been campaigning at 130 for several years now. Both 33 years old. Chantel Cameron sports professional record, 18 wins with one loss, no draws, eight knockouts. To Elham Mechaleru sports professional record, 17 wins with two losses, no draws, three knockouts. Having never been knocked out in 19 professional bouts. Curious to see how Chantel Cameron is going to handle this assignment, given how much of her decorum has changed. She's not being trained by Jamie Moore or Nigel Travis anymore. She's not with Matchroom. She's with Queensbury. Questions that need answers. How is she going to look now no, moving no, forward? No. And what's the long-term strategy here? What is the long-term plan? Because you're campaigning at 140 pounds, but there are no 140 pounders over there at Queensbury for you to fight. The biggest fights, the biggest of the big fights that you could have at or around these weights all seem to involve fighters that are somewhere else. This fight with Elham Mechaled is for a WBC interim title that would line up Chantel for the winner of the upcoming Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano rematch. Right? The thing is, if Chantel Cameron wins her fight, and I think she's going to, and say Katie Taylor wins her fight, her rematch with Amanda Serrano, I don't think for a second Eddie's gonna send Katie over to Queensbury for Chantel. Well, I mean, he sent Katie over to Netflix for Amanda. Yeah, because Netflix is promising Katie Taylor $6 million for that rematch. Is Frank Warren gonna offer Katie $6 million for a Cameron rematch? I don't think so. So like I said, I don't think it's likely that Katie would be the one that crosses over, that if Chantel wants a Katie Taylor rematch, the only way it happens is if Matchroom promotes it. Which then begs the question, why did she go to Queensbury? If what you were gunning for is a Katie Taylor rematch, why would you go to Queensbury? Doesn't that put distance between you and that rematch? Rubber match. Right. It wouldn't be just a rematch, it would be a rubber match. If Chantel won the first one, Katie won the second, and a third would be a tiebreaker. Questions that need answers. Chantel Cameron's at Queensbury now. So what is it that Chantel thinks Queensbury can do for her that Matchroom could not? I'm not sure. What, you went to Queensbury to pursue a Katie Taylor trilogy? What? What? You couldn't have gone to Queensbury to fight Sandy Ryan. She's back over there at Matchroom. You couldn't have went to Queensbury to fight the likes of Natasha Jonas or Lauren Price, these welterweights. They're at Boxer. You couldn't have went to Queensbury to pursue a fight with any of them you don't have the leverage to draw any of those fighters to you if you would want to have fights with them you would have to go to them yeah so when i think about chantel cameron's upcoming fight and it's a solid fight the fight with elham mechaled solid rebound fight solid opponent i just can't help but think what does she do after that what is the long-term strategy here what's the end game if you leave match room for queensbury it's got to be because you think queensbury can do something for you that match room could not would not what is that not proposing that she should have stayed at match room for the entirety of her career fighters leave their promoters all the time but they leave their promoters for other opportunities and I don't see what opportunities Queensbury can provide her, especially if she's still at 140. I would have thought she'd go to Boxer, maybe campaign at 147. 
they have two champions there. Natasha Jonas, Lauren Price. Maybe they could have put together a fight between Chantel and Michaela Mayer. See what I mean? But I don't know what the future really holds for Chantel beyond the upcoming El Hamechaled fight. I don't know what they're going to do for her at Queensbury. It's a story that only time can tell. For now, she's going to be fighting El Hamechaled next month on the 20th. I think she's going to make it through it. See what happens after. All right, guys, everybody talked about Ryan Garcia. Now it's Papi's turn. So first of all, I don't condone pets whatsoever, period. But let's talk about the inconsistencies, the penalties, the millions of dollars. I do not understand it. We should have a commission, okay, that oversees everything, every state. I actually agree with that. One commission to oversee it all. Because Canelo Alvarez gets popped in a different state, gets six months. Shane Mosley gets popped and gets zero. So you're telling me that Ryan Garcia gets a year and millions of dollars? Yeah, because not all those situations are the same and not all those guys pop for the same thing. Ask is talking about inconsistencies. I think he's being a bit inconsistent himself because while Canelo was going through all of that, you were defending him. Until he left you. Now you're defending Ryan. Till what? Till he leaves you too? That is not right. Let's talk about Devin Haney now. Devin Haney, you're pathetic. You're dancing around in the bowling alley because you got your decision reversed? I agree with Oscar here. I don't think it's becoming of an athlete, a competitor with a competitor's mindset to have behaved how Devin behaved in that situation. Nobody's gonna forget about that beating you took. He's right about that. Oscar's right about that. You can strike it from the record, but you can't strike it from people's memories, what they saw. You know, doing a little dance because the New York State Athletic Commission reversed the outcome. This doesn't rub people the right way. It's, it's bad optics for a fighter. Oh, and let's not forget, you're accusing me of not paying you? Bro, you just do not sell. There's been a lot of talks about this, that Ryan and Devin expect more money than they actually stand to make from that show. But Devin, Devin more specifically, who, let's be honest, you were relying on Ryan's fans to buy the fight. It's the only reason you fought him. You wanted to capitalize off of his fans. That's the bottom line. You can audit my company anytime you want. I pay every fighter. And I'm pretty sure you got that from Canelo, what he started. Actually, he got it from Ryan. See, once again, Ask is not being up front. Ryan's the one who said he hadn't been paid for the fight, and Devin Haney followed up by saying he hadn't been paid either. He got that from Ryan, who is still your fighter. So, bro, that one-year layoff, that retirement, just enjoy it. Fuck you. Reconciling all of this, all of these separate parties and all their separate ulterior motives, Oscar has his, so does Ryan and Devin. The money. Devin only started complaining about the money and not being paid the money, the money he was expecting, after Ryan. Ryan's the one who started that. Ryan is the one who was complaining. Devin just agreed with him. It's got nothing to do with Canelo or anything Canelo Alvarez said. Oscar just used that as an excuse to bring him up. But as far as the money, the money and who started complaining, your fighter is the one who started complaining. It's your fighter that got the ball rolling and Devin just agreed with him. The expectations. Their expectations for what they would be paid for that fight. A lot of people are saying that, look, it did all right. The pay-per-view did all right, but nothing astronomical. Anywhere in between, I think, 300 to 500,000 pay-per-view buys sold, which is good in today's unstable market, but it's hardly astronomical. The expectation. It seems that both Ryan and Devin were expecting more. Two more young fighters in today's boxing world whose reach exceeds their grasp can't seem to grasp that you're not pulling from some money tree some infinite resource the money you're looking for doesn't just form out of thin air it comes from the customers the paying customers who are constantly being bombarded in the american market with pay-per-view after pay-per-view after pay-per-view to where a lot of them don't want to pay anymore so where you're expecting big money from big buys you better get real a lot of people in boxing better get real specific to devin devin's proven himself to be a shrewd businessman with a good team around him over time but make no mistake he's been making good money very good money because the zone paid good money to bring him to their platform what they paid was not based on what he generates it wasn't based on his market value it wasn't based on what he draws what he sells it was based on their desire to bring talent to their platform so they were willing to overpay overpay in excess of a fighter's market value that 
may have carried over into what became his top-ranked deal, it did. More or less what he was paid for fighting George Kambosos two times in Australia and subsequently Vasolo Machenko, it carried over into that deal, but it was never based on what Devin generates. It was never based on his marquee value. So now that he's a free agent, he's getting a reality check. There are pros and cons to being a free agent. You do have full autonomy to do business with whoever you want to do business with, but they also have to want to do business with you. And it doesn't just have to make sense for you. It has to make sense for them too. That they're not just going to throw three and four and five million dollars at you all willy-nilly like money grows on trees for a fight like a Sandor Martin fight. Not that he's having it anyway because he isn't. Just the point that Devin Haney has been making very good money for a long time, but it was never based on what he generates. It was never based on what he draws or what he's good for. It all started with the zone being willing to overpay to draw talent to their platform. An important detail. Because now that you're a free agent, without having made a commitment to any promoter or any platform, you don't get a hefty contract minimum that they have to honor. No, whatever you get now, it's based on the perceived value of the show and the perceived value of your fight. Devin's stock isn't on the up and up, so why would he expect people to just throw money at him? Now or later. Now or when he comes back? Your stock is not on the up and up. A bit of advice. If Devin Haney is not going to be boxing for what remains of this year, he should stay away from social media because he's not endearing himself to the boxing community at large with what he's doing. Disappear for a while. Get away from things. Stay away from social media. The only thing you're going to get on social media is trolled. Trolled by Ryan Garcia, trolled by Ryan Garcia's fans, and some of Gervonta's. The only thing you're gonna get is trolled. Think he's got the right idea taking some time off to clear his head, refocus, retune, refuel, but you gotta get off social media. Stop talking. And stop looking for sympathy because in spite of Ryan Garcia testing positive for a banned substance, if nothing else, we've established that a lot of people don't care. It's not about right or wrong, it's about trolling you. So disappear and don't give them the chance. Stop making public statements about it and announcing what you're doing. Go on holiday. Go to the Bahamas. Get a blowjob. Go over to Asia. Go over to Thailand. Get a blowjob. See the world. Experience new things. Get a blowjob. Recharge your batteries. Get a blowjob. Get off of social media. That's what I think he needs to do because right now, he's public enemy number one. And trying to cultivate sympathy, it ain't gonna work. In men's light heavyweight news, exclusive, Mark Ramsey, longtime trainer of Artur Betterbeef, says that Artur is now back in training. WBC, WBO, and IBF light heavyweight world champion Artur Betterbeef has recovered from the injury that scuppered his undisputed showdown with Dmitry Bivial, according to his Montreal-based trainer, Mark Ramsey. Betterbeef was due to collide with WBA champion Bivol June 1st as part of the ambitious assault on boxing by Saudi Arabia's Riyadh season. However, a knee injury to Betterbeef postponed the long awaited all-Russian clash with no new date yet to be announced. Not officially. It looks like we'll be getting this undisputed title fight sometime in October. He started this week with his boxing training, and it has been a little more intense, Ramsey said in an exclusive interview with Fights ATW. The reaction we have is very good, and we are very happy from what we've seen. Everything is going in the right direction. The surgery and all the physio work is done now. I believe we did the right thing to pull him out. It was a tough decision for us to cancel. When we expect and wanted that fight for so long, but I think it was the right decision. The all-Russian light heavyweight kingmaker fight would have seen both men earn record-breaking money. It's not a question of money, Ramsey continued. It's a question about winning that bout and winning it at 100%. He had a minor surgery on the left knee, but now everything is under control. They, Riyadh season, have a plan to do the fight in October. That is what they told us. The time frame is good for us also. When we have spoken to our doctor and everything, it looks like that will be very possible. I noticed the last couple of months that Artur Betterbeev in some ways has tried to make it seem as if it's Dmitry Bivol's fault that the fight hadn't happened in previous years. And many of Artur's fans too. Just for Artur to be the one that ended up pulling out. Pulling out due to an injury and that's not unusual for Artur Betterbeef, but still, the irony. Because he does get injured a lot. But the irony of you trying to blame Dmitry Bivol for the fight not having happened sooner when wasn't it your promoter that poured cold water on the fight years ago saying that Dmitry was boring? And years later, when it finally gets made, 
you pull out. You pull out injured, but still. It's just a funny turn of events that so many have tried to make it seem like it's Dimitri Bivol's fault that this fight hasn't happened yet when all the evidence is to the contrary. So now it might happen in October. I saw an article on Boxing Scene that asked a question. Will either Artur Betterbeef or Dimitri Bivol, the winner, will the winner of their fight reach the Hall of Fame? It's a legitimate question. On Pro Box TV's Deep Waters, the retired champion Chris Algieri was not so sure. As of right now, neither one gets in, but a win over the other one, and it becomes arguable, Algieri said. Probably Bivol, because Bivol's got the win over Canelo Alvarez. He's been undefeated. If he beats better beef, depending on what he does in the rest of his career, because it's still kind of early, even for Bivol. He's not a young guy, but he's still got a lot more to do and a lot of fights left in him. Algieri painted a different picture for the heavy hitting better beef, who at 39 tore his meniscus, forcing the delay of the fight on June 1st. Better Beef is the opposite, Algieri added. He's at the end of his row. He's gonna be 40 years old. He's actually having trouble getting to fights now, but a win over Bivol is massive, and there could be an argument for that. But in terms of what he's done up until this point, I don't think either one is a Hall of Famer. The also retired Pauli Malinaji countered quickly and returned fire. I'm gonna push back on that. They are the best light heavyweights of this era. If you can't get into the Hall of Fame as the best of your era in a weight class, that just means the entire weight class wasn't good? Well, Pauli, it's not the Hall of Good, it's the Hall of Fame. A lot of fighters are good. A lot of weight classes have a lot of fighters that are good. The Hall of Fame is supposed to be for that extra. But Pauli continued, it was a pretty solid era of light heavyweights, not to be outdone. Algieri doubled down. Yeah, but neither one beat any Hall of Famers. Bivol's got the win over Canelo. Algieri then asked Malinaji whether he felt they had a standout win. And Malinaji replied, Better Beef, if he doesn't fight again, he's one of the most destructive light heavyweights in history. You can get me the light heavyweights that are in the Hall of Fame, and I think Better Beef knocks him out. Maybe. Yeah, maybe if we had a time machine, and maybe if Hall of Fame inductions were based on fantasy matches. But they're not. They're really not. They're based on what you managed to accomplish throughout your professional boxing career. I think Dimitri Bivol and Artur Better Beef are two of the most skilled fighters in boxing right now. Two of the best, but they're not that popular, and this is the Hall of Fame we're talking about here. Fame. Artur and Dimitri jointly have only reached a certain level of fame throughout their professional boxing careers for as long as they've been around. I would say that the winner of the fight gets into the Hall of Fame. The winner. That is, the argument is stronger that the winner would get into the Hall of Fame than both of them. I don't know that the both of them would get in, and there is room for human error and partiality because it's based on votes. It's based on a panel of votes. Not merit. Not a governing criterion intended to keep all things even and all things equal across the board. That's not how they do it. So if the people voting ain't sweet on Russians, they ain't sweet on Artur, and they ain't sweet on Bivol. You know they might be sweet on Wilder? I don't think Wilder's had a Hall of Fame worth the career. I don't, but one of them might because they're sentimental. And this is what I mean. Bottom line, I think the winner of the fight gets into the hall, but I don't know about both of them.